What's up, beautiful people, and welcome back to another majestic comic book review video where I say words and you, the magically delicious, listen. It is I, your crazy Nicolas Cage, your steward of Gundor, your genius, billionaire playboy, basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And would you guys be ever so kindly as to smash that like and subscribe button because every little bit helps in this crazy YouTube world. And today, guys, we are continuing our Kung Fu adventure with Chang Chi, issue number two, written by Jean Luen Yang, with the art drawn by Dyke Ron. And without further ado, let's get physical. Alrighty, folks. So this issue takes us to the southern coast of China, and flying above the city of Maku is Chang Chi and his Five Women Society flagship. Now Chung, he's been using his father's organization, its resources, in order to help make the world a better place. And that's exactly what Chung is doing at the moment, using his father's resources as a means to help benefit the world. Because the word is, is that the Iron 88 Casino, a secret triad base, have recently obtained the Cosmic Cube, which of course is one of the most powerful objects within the Marvel Universe. And tonight, the casino is auctioning the cube off to the highest bidder and almost every single person attending this event are criminals. Criminals affiliated with the organizations such as AIM, those within Hydra, and The Hand. And so the idea here is for Chung to outbid them all using his father's wealth and to prevent the cube from falling into criminal hands. Now, where in the last issue, Sister Dagger accompanied Chung to confiscate the urine root, this time we have Brother Saber tagging along. Now, Takashi is shown to be acting nervous, but we'll touch base on that in a bit as we progress further within the story. Now, as these two make their way over to the auction, keep in mind that Maku is basically China's Vegas. The only difference is Maku pulls in five times the revenue. So in other words, this spot is fresh and extremely polished. So yeah, this place is balling with all the monies. Now, upon arriving at the Casino 88, with Chang and Takashi pulling up like a couple of bosses, it's announced that the Five Weapon Society is here to party. Now, at the same time, we get a sense at how all these people from these many different criminal organizations react to Chong representing his father's organization. And it's abundantly made clear that the majority of these people are not happy, especially one particular Hydra agent who is still holding a grudge regarding the time Chong punched his throat, which made him sound like a chipmunk for over a month, which by the way is hilarious, but I digress. Now, regardless of how those within Hydra or AIM feel about Chong's presence, fact of the matter is that during this moment, the circumstances are vastly different. Therefore, everyone's pre-existing knowledge of Chang Chi's history has to be put off to the side, because Chang Chi isn't here as an Avenger, nor is he here as the master of Kung Fu. Chang Chi is here as Brother Han, the leader of the Five Weapon Society. Now, remember how I mentioned that I would explain as to why Brother Saber is acting so nervous? Well, check it, because it's here where we learn the reason why. Because we're eventually met with the auction's host, Lady Iron Fan whom we learn is Takashi's ex-girlfriend, and that she was the one who gave him the necklace. And yeah, it's obvious that Takashi is still crushing on his ex, hence his nervousness. Afterwards, Takashi runs over to Chang, who turned down the champagne that was offered. Takashi explains to him that it's rude to not accept a glass at these sort of events. But also at the same time, bro, you know, you shouldn't drink it, just pretend to. And yeah, I know it's weird, but you know what, dude? It's just how things are done in this life. And within a matter of moments, we see as to why this is the case, because someone from the Inner Demons takes an actual sip of champagne and immediately drops dead on the floor. Now, it's here where the auction for the Cosmic Cube begins, starting it off with $4 billion. And within seconds, bid after bid after bid, the price rises to $10 billion. Now, Chang is determined, thus he declares his bid for $20 billion. But unfortunately, it doesn't end here, folks, because the hand surprisingly raises the bid to $30 billion. And this is completely unexpected because, according to Chang, this wasn't supposed to happen because he did his research prior to tonight. He knew the exact amount of money that he had to spend, along with knowing the amount the rival organizations could spend as well. Therefore, Chang suspects that the hand are possibly lying about the amount of money that they are willing to bid. Lady Iron Fan then reminds everyone present that the consequences of bidding beyond their means can be quite dire. And as she's saying this, one of her assistants whispers to her ear, asking if she is ready to pull up the body bags. So seemingly Lady Iron Fan is also aware that those representing the hand are probably full of shit. 
Yet despite everyone's skepticism, the hand informs Lady Iron Fan that the inner demon, who we all saw get poisoned earlier, had allegedly, quote, prior to his death, graciously gifted the Iron Demon's resources over to the hands. So in other words, the hand coerced the inner demon's cash flow by using murder. And so as it stands, Chong has no clue on what to do next, for he doesn't have enough money to exceed $30 billion. And so just as the hand are about to win the Cosmic Cube, Chong reaches for his cuff in a very subtle manner. Don't worry, folks. We'll touch on that in a bit. And boom, Captain America, the Star Spangled Avenger himself, comes smashing through the casino. And it's made obviously clear that Captain America is here for the Cosmic Cube. And it's because of this abrupt disruption where the entire room turns into chaos, with many of those among Hydra and AIM accusing Chong for possibly leaking tonight's auction out to the Avengers. But in response, Takashi smashes the same Hydra agent who was complaining earlier about his throat. So yeah, suck it Hydra. Afterwards, Chong goes after Cap, who's already snatched up the Cosmic Cube. And with Chong demanding Cap to turn over the cube, it catches Cap completely off guard, leaving him shocked and confused to see Chong Chi here of all places. And it definitely proves to be a reminder that not a lot of people amongst the superhero community are aware of Chong's current status quo. But it's because of this moment that Chong is easily able to kick the cube right out of Cap's hand so that he can then take it for himself. And so once Chang takes the Cosmic Cube, Chang activates it and begins harnessing the cube into creating an illusion that makes all the villains like Madame Hydra, Modok, and the Hand, along with many others, think that Chong's being chased after by Captain America. So in natural response, all the villains begin to chase them down as well. However, once the villains follow Cap into the next room, they find Chang standing over Cap's dead body. And it's here within seconds when the illusion begins to fade. And it's here where the bad guys realize that they've been locked in one of the casino's vaults, along with a bomb of sleeping gas. Now, this is where things get pretty cool, because it's here where we find out that Chong had called Cap by using the communicator on his cufflink. But with everything else that followed, with locking the villains in the vault, that was all on the spot. Heroic improvisation. But it's here where Takashi tells Chong that he understands the reason of trying to keep the Cosmic Cube away from everyone else, but he tells him that working alongside Captain America isn't a good look. But we also learned during this conversation that Chong put this contingency into place because he wanted to make sure that the Cosmic Cube was leaving here in good hands, Cap's hands. And we can tell just by looking at Takashi's face that he's a bit annoyed because this wasn't part of the plan. Now, this is where a Lady Iron Fan shows up and she tells both Chong and Takashi that what they've done here today is insulting. Insulting to the extreme, like not even those within Hydra would pull off a stunt like the one they just did. Therefore, their punishment is death. And with that, Lady Iron Fan launches her attacks against our heroes. And this fight is fierce because not only is Lady Ironheart capable of wielding these war slashing katana like fans, She's also possesses some sort of mind control capability over the fans so that instead of a one versus three fight, it's actually three versus three. And yeah, throughout these panels, we get to see a lot of kicking, punching, grunting, a lot of twirling. And we also get to see Cap pass the shield over the Chong so that he can block one of Lee Iron Fan's attacks. Now, fortunately, as the fight progresses, Chong is able to end this fight with a swift punch to the face. And alas, the villainous fan-wielding danger is down for the count. From there, Takashi picks up the Cosmic Cube and he hands it over to Cap, honoring his word, even though he doesn't want to. And with it, Cap radios over for backup. Thus, the night becomes a victory for the ages. However, things get a bit more tense because once we pick back up with Chong and Takashi, the two end up getting into an argument regarding Chong not telling him about Captain America in the first place. And the reason is because, oh, well, now our organization doesn't have the Cosmic Cube. It's more due to the fact that at the end of the day, Chong and Takashi are brothers. And so the fact that Chong didn't even include Takashi into his plans makes him feel like Chong doesn't trust him. And so once Chong ends the conversation and walks away, we find out here that Takashi actually has the Cosmic Cube in his possession. And what we just saw with Cap Takashi had basically duped him, duped Captain America. And we jump over into Cap's Quinjet where we see Lady Iron Fan in his custody. But just like that, she begins to disappear right before Cap's eyes. And it's here where Cap realizes that he's just been played. Afterwards, we see the actual Lady Iron Fan chatting about with her minions. And though she's grateful that Brother Saber had used the cube to orchestrate her escape, she's worrying about her casino. 
along with all the revenue that she was supposed to make but now can't. But it's here with the shadowy figure who showed up in the previous issue is here to meet with Lady Iron Fan. For this shadowy figure wants Lady Iron Fan to help burn down the Five Weapon Society to the ground. And that folks was Chang Chi, issue number two. And I really enjoyed this issue. Jean Lu and Yang is definitely the perfect writer for the series as he's able to write Chang as an extremely likable character, almost like he's your everyday sort of guy who just so happens to be the son of some global terrorist. And he just so happens to know every single form of martial arts to a T. I'm also a fan of how the story is using characters such as Spider-Man and Captain America as Heroes of the Week. Yet at the end of the day, this is still a Chang chi centric book and these guest heroes are not the focal point. They're simply here to showcase that Chang chi has been part of the Marvel Universe for some, for some time now. And so here's how this character is viewed amongst fellow heroes. Also, when it comes to the shadowy figure, I'm very curious to see as to who this person is. Is it Chang chis father? Is it Sister Hammer? Or heck, is it the Mandarin? But yeah, overall this issue was great. Uh, the book's art and colors are not my immediate go-to, but that's just my personal preference. I'm sure that everyone else will enjoy the book's art because, you know, at the end of the day, it is great. I just wish that the colors had a bit more spice to them. But those are my thoughts, and I cannot wait to cover Chang chi issue number three. But yeah, folks, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more updates. And also, let me know who you guys think this shadowy figure is. Because I'm curious to see who you guys decide to pick. Or maybe it's an entirely new character we've yet to meet. Chang chi issue number 2, gets a 9 out of 10. Giggity goo.